Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Hometown Heroes. I'm Mike Canici. I'm very excited tonight. Um, when you talk about the great athletes that have come out of the state of Connecticut, you think of Maria Conlin, you know, Dan Orlowski. And this uh, individual's name has to be mentioned in the same breath because she definitely is, when it comes to soccer, she is the best in the business. And she currently is the record holder at Albertus Magnus College for both points and goals in her career. She had an outstanding high school career at Woodland High School. I mean, she's done it all. And it is my pleasure to introduce to you, Miss Haley Andrews. And Haley, I want to thank you for coming on today. It's a real honor. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike, for having me. No problem. So, Haley, let me ask you, how did the love for soccer start? I think you were like three or four years old, correct? Yeah, I was really young when I first started. I mean, my parents threw me in dance class first, and they realized, like, that was not for me. Definitely not. It was like, cry every time I went. I think, like, my parents just, like, threw me on the pitch, and they just knew, like, that's, like, what I love to do. And ever since then, I just never wanted to stop. Right. And if I remember correctly, you played – you didn't just play with the girls. You played in the boys' divisions as well, right? And, I mean, yeah, that's really when, where they said, you know, there's something special about this kid because you proved you could hold your own playing with the boys as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so let me ask you, Haley. Um, you started around four or five. I mean, you're a little kid, obviously, back then. But, I mean, did did you have that love for it? Like, did you love going every night? I mean, practice, games, stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, like, from, like, everything – yeah, from, like, everything I could remember, like, when I was really young is that, like, that's what I would look forward to. Like, especially once I hit, like, the travel days and, like, when I would travel. Um, it's, like, the travels, like, right before premiere. And it was, like, so, like, fun and, like, exciting. Like, I just wanted to always be there. Like, that's what I looked forward to, like, after school. Like, that's, what, like, what I would be doing. Like, that's all I remember is, like, after school, like, it was always just soccer for me. Like, it was never anything else. I was never, in, like, interested in doing anything else other than soccer when I was definitely younger. So you really didn't play any other sports. It was mainly just soccer. And, uh, I mean, did you continue dance or did that kind of end? No, that ended right away. But I did pick up basketball when I was younger, too. And then I did that in high school as well. So I did basketball a little bit, but I've always only really focused on soccer. Yeah, so let me ask you, Haley. One thing I've always been fascinated about, is the conditioning part of soccer because you really have to be in good shape to play that sport. I mean, you watch these players on TV, they go up and down the field. I mean, that's not a small field. So, I mean, how important is it for you as a yeah, soccer player like, to stay conditioned? Yeah. Like, honestly, I wasn't the biggest like person at going like to the gym, like running every day. I just think like constantly playing and like playing soccer specifically, like, practices everything includes running so like once you just pick up like games like when you're playing games 24 7 like it really like helps your stamina like you just get used to it like i know like people will ask me all the time like how do you run a 90 minute game and it's just like the adrenaline during the game and like always always constantly playing like you don't really like realize that kind of aspect to it right and let me ask you, I mean, soccer is the one sport as well that you could play year round. You could play it in the summer, uh, fall, spring, right. winter. I mean, did you play year round? I mean, did you play indoor soccer as well? Yeah, absolutely. That's like the best right there is like, I remember like for years, like I would just be at Farmington Sports Arena, as we call it, FSA in Farmington. And it was just like such a good facility and like playing like every single Saturday like, indoor, it's kind of hard to practice during the week. I know, like, Fridays we would practice, but, like, Saturdays was, like, the day to play games in indoor, and just – you could spend hours there and just play. Right. And, I mean, Prospect's a great town. I mean, a lot of tradition when it comes to sports. I mean, you've seen so many athletes, and we'll get to Woodland High in a sec, but you've seen so many athletes just, you know, excel, whether they went to uh, Oxford High School, Seymour High School, or uh, Woodland High School. I mean – just talk about the prospect community because that had to be right. a lot of fun to grow up there. Oh, absolutely. Everybody knows everybody in that town. Right. So, Haley, let me ask you. Um, I think when you were about eight or nine years old, you started playing for a uh, uh, travel team, correct? Yep. Yeah. So talk about that a little bit. Yeah. So like I said before, like the travel days, is like what I could really remember before, obviously anything before that. But travel, like travel soccer was more of like a family to me. It was like the girls in my like high school grade like 
that I grew up with since I was younger. Like you showed one of the girls you showed in one of the pictures at the beginning. Um, she's been like one of my best friends since I was younger and she was just like always by my side. So like playing travel was just really like a family thing. And like, that's what I really realized that I was ready for the next level was travel. I remember my dad was like, yeah, we, <laughs> we need to get you out of travel. Like he wanted me to go up a level and my dad was a coach for a long time. So <coughs> he coached me for a long time, my dad. But the travel days was definitely more of a family for me. And, like, obviously the experience of playing soccer, but that was really just, like, all of my my parents' friends, my friends from, like, middle school. Like, it was just all of us together. And I think, Haley, that's important in sports more than anything else is, yeah, you want to exceed at it and stuff like that. But you really do meet a lot of new people. You make a lot of friends. And I think that's important because you can't just – rely on school to make friendships. I mean, you really have to try different things, whether it's dance, sports, or, you know, music, whatever it might be. I think that's very essential to a young kid. Yeah, for sure. Getting in extracurricular activities is definitely very important. Right. So I'm sure a lot of your weekends were busy with travel and playing soccer a lot. So, I mean, let me ask you, I mean, that's a commitment for a young kid because although you enjoy playing at the same time, you do sacrifice a lot of your weekend as a young kid. So, I mean, how did you keep yourself motivated to keep getting up every Saturday, Sunday morning and stuff like that? Yeah, sometimes, like, it would be, like, my dad pulled me out of bed at, like, 5 a.m. to go to a tournament. Like, it was, like, brutal once I was hitting premiere. Like, it was tournaments on, like, every single weekend. But, honestly, it's just, like, the aspect of, like I said, (coughs) like, my teammates, my coaches, like, it's – Obviously, playing soccer was always my motivation. Like, I just love the, like, adrenaline it gives me, like, the competitiveness. Like, I'm very competitive. And, like, but, like, it's the people surrounded by me. I think I have to thank the most for that whole experience. Like, my coach, especially, like, just always, like, we were so, like, well-rounded girls, like, as a team. And, like, it was just a fun environment. And I think that's, like, what made me want to go every day was just being with the girls and, like, playing with the sport we loved. Just everybody loved it. So it was a great atmosphere. Right. So let me ask you, I mean, a lot of times at a young age, you know, I know uh, kids over the years who have played football or they played softball, whatever it might be, but they don't necessarily like to watch it on TV as much as they love to play it. Did you enjoy watching soccer on TV? I mean, I'm sure you got really into this World Cup recently, correct? Oh, man, the World Cup has been crazy lately. But yeah, I think I honestly loved watching the U.S. women's national team the most, like, because that's like girls I could like reflect upon, like, starting at a young age, always being competitive. And, like, those girls, like, I feel like I don't watch men's soccer as much, even though it's probably, like, very – it's mu- men's soccer is much faster and more fun to watch, I'll admit. Like, but, like, women's soccer, like, I just feel like the U.S. women's national team is, like, the team I really watch the most of. Yeah. And, I mean, let me ask you. I mean, as you're watching, I mean, do you kind of see things where you're like, you know, that's something I haven't tried yet or – that's something I can work on. I mean, do you learn a lot from the games you watch? Because you could always keep learning. Yeah, I mean, watching those games, it's, like, more of the aspect of how, like, calm and cool and collective they are. Like, just passing the ball around, like, that's, like, something that's obviously not seen. Like, it's very, like, hard to do in a game. But, like, just keeping possession in a game is a lot harder than it looks. Like, to just pass the ball around and um, try to keep possession. But, like, watching them, they make it look so easy. So, like, that's always something, like, I've always looked at when watching games, like, how well they can just possess the ball with each other. Right. So, let me ask you, Haley, um, you also played for Long River, correct? I mean, talk about that experience and what that was like. Long River, yeah, I mean, I remember my coach, Coach Eismeyer, she was a great coach. She coached all three sports that I played in middle school. Um, so she was a great coach to start off with. And then like the girls, like I said, growing up from travel, travel soccer is like where those like travel soccer was middle school years. So like all those girls that I played with in travel all played on the middle school team mostly. So it was just like, we were constantly like, we knew how each other played. Like it was just like the same girls, same collect group. And, um, I mean, like, um, at Long River, it was, it was always the same girls, like I said, so just seems like we all just grew up together that's just how it was yeah and I mean like you you touched on it a little bit but it really that's probably the most rewarding thing to you is the people you've met and the lasting friendships you have because you have that bond with them and you know I'm sure when you guys hang out you don't want to talk about soccer all the time so that gives that gives you a nice escape because you 
you play so much of it sometimes. Sometimes you just want to talk about different things, but that's the what's so cool about having, you know, friends on the soccer team and stuff like that because you get to know each other off the field as well. Absolutely. Very yeah. True. So let me ask you, Haley, um, you uh, attended Woodland High School, and it's funny because I think Woodland is only about 21 years old. It's not – it hasn't been around yeah. for a long time, and they've had just such a successful sports program between football, between basketball, baseball, softball, um, I think even volleyball they're good at, and then, of course, soccer. So, I mean, talk about the experience at Woodland High School. So my experience at Woodland is probably something I will miss for the rest of my life. Like, it was just the, the championship we won, like the NBL. Like, that was just, like, the best thing I think. That's one of the best things that's ever happened to me in soccer. And honestly, like I said, so, like, these girls that I, like, have been playing with my whole life all moved up into – Woodland together. So most of us all knew each other. We were all good friends. And a couple of my teammates, so I have two teammates, the Sousas. So their dad was my coach for like all premier, like basically like since I was 12. Like he's right. the person that formed me into the player I am today. So like those two girls that I played with, like they were on that team. Most of the girls that played on that team were from Dynamo, our premier team. So I mean, like, we were so competitive. Like we, like everybody wanted to be at practice every day. Nobody had a problem with anything that went on. Like we lost, we just got better. Like it was just that was an experience for soccer was the best experience of my life, honestly. And like the coaches, like the environment, like, like you said, like all those sports at Woodland, like we're a young school and like everyone just cares the same way about sports. Everybody on a sports team is important. Like it was just, everybody knew each other. It's just an important, like, anything in the sports world was important to us. Yeah. And, and Woodland is really, <clears throat> excuse me, Woodland is really kind of, you know, established itself as being right there, like as far as sports towns and sports teams with the Ansonias and the Shelton's, the right. Seymour's, the Derby's, stuff like that, because they've kind of really are kind of like a little bit into that lower Naugatuck Valley. And they've really kind of it's been so good to see them because I mean, like I said, between all their sports programs, they've won quite a few titles. And I mean, that's, and even their running programs were very good as well. So I yeah. mean, they've really kind of been a force in high school sports since their inception. Yeah. Um, I know like a lot of the sports, like you just have like that rival school. So it was for us, I want to say it was always Naugatuck high, like Naugatuck high was always our, our biggest competition. And what the funny part is, is like two of those girls on that team, maybe even more honestly played for my premier team, like I said. So like playing against them all the time, it was like, I knew everybody that we played against in high school. Like anyone, I knew someone on Seymour, I knew someone on like Oxford, uh, Nogatuck, St. Paul. Like it was just all girls I just knew. And let me ask you, I know, um, in football, Woodland's big rival was Seymour, obviously. But yeah. in soccer, what was what would you say was like your big game that you guys looked to every every year? <laughs> you know, that's a great question. I would say our biggest game of the year that like everybody like looked forward to was definitely Naugatuck, because Naugatuck was it's a very close school and like every sport is com like competitive with Naugatuck. And then honestly, Watertown because they were the our biggest competition wise of playing soccer because they like when I was in high school I think um up until my sophomore year when we won right. they were they won like back to back to back in NVLs championships so it was just like a big deal to beat them right and that again that that was a rival too with Naugatuck they had one with them I believe in softball they had one in basketball obviously football so I mean, yeah. it's nice to have those rivals, and they're always friendly. I mean, they never get carried away with them, but they're friendly rivals. And, I mean, that's something that you love to experience as a kid growing up because, I mean, that's what being in high school is all about is competing and having these memories and stuff like that. So it had to be just a great time for you playing at Woodland. Yeah, it was just like that's what it was. Like you would go to a soccer game on Friday, and like right after that game, we're all getting ready. And we're going to the football game. Like we just all support. Like we all just supported each other. Right. Sure. So, so let me ask you. I mean, um, what was the goal in the high school? Though obviously to win. I mean, you want to win, and you talked about that NVL championship, how important that was. But 
I mean, as a freshman, you're young, so I, I'm sure you're still trying to figure out what kind of goals you want. But by the time you got to be a junior, what was really the goal for you at, on an individual level? What did you want to accomplish? I definitely wanted to have a successful season after, like, you know, the soft, like sophomore year winning the NBL. Like, I wanted to just, like, keep that standard high for us. And, like, I think one of the biggest things I've learned over, like, my time playing is that I want to be a good, like, role model for the kids under me. Like, I want them to have the same perspective on soccer, same wanting to, like, win, competitiveness, like, outlook on the whole game. Like, I think that's, like, what I was always, like, I'm just a very outgoing person. So, like, my junior year, like, that was when it was time for me to be the leader at that point in my age. Like, obviously, freshman and sophomore year, you have your time to, like, be younger, enjoy, play. But, like, once you get to that junior, senior year, there's kids that actually look up to you a lot. And, like, you don't want to, like, ever come to – like, I never came to practice with a bad attitude. Like, I never wanted that – make like, I just always wanted to be positive for the girls. And, like, that's, like, my biggest thing was always being – there for them, a role model, positive. That was like my three biggest things, definitely. Right. And I mean, you saw a lot of the field, correct? All four years. I know definitely uh, sophomore, junior, and senior year, but even freshman, you saw a lot of playing time, correct? Yes. Freshman year, I, I yes, I started my freshman year. Yeah. So, I mean, that's another thing, too, because while that's a great accomplishment in itself, but I'm sure at times you felt pressure because you're saying to yourself, okay. I got to be better than I was the year before. And that's kind of unfair sometimes because you could have a tremendous freshman year and it may not top what your sophomore year may not top that, but it doesn't mean you didn't have a good year. But I think sometimes you, you tend to put pressure on yourself because you want to be better than you were the year before. Yeah, definitely my freshman year when I was starting, that was like coming into that, I was definitely had to be at the top of my game. Like there was no doubt about that. I had girls above me that went to like Lex Kazmir and went to UConn. Like she was a, she was a star like on the field. Like, so playing next to her, like we were both the center mids, like it mattered a lot to be like the best I could be to like meet their standards. Like that was like my biggest thing. Like I always wanted to be on my game and that like took a lot. Like you can't make mistakes. Like when you're, when you're younger, you can't like freshman year, there's people on that bench that could come in so fast. Like if you like, we're not up to your, like playing your game. So like, that was my biggest thing was just always coming in, like, ready to go. Right. That's freshman year. So let me ask you, Haley, um, what would you do in the summertime to get ready for the upcoming? We'll just talk about high school in general. What would you do, like, as far as keeping yourself in shape, uh, working on stuff? I mean, I'm sure you played in summer leagues, but, I mean, what did you do to keep yourself in good shape to get ready for the fall season? Yeah, so once soccer season was over at high school, premier soccer would start. So all during the summers, like our premier team, we would be able to – we played in tournaments all over all over the state. Um, we had practice like twice a week, and I think like that's what kept me like very busy was doing like practices a week, definitely just running some – like running in the days of the summer for sure. I mean, when I also like – when I was younger, I always worked at a summer camp. So like working with those kids, they're constantly moving. So I was always like busy. That's just right. like the biggest thing is just staying busy. Right. And let's think about this, just some of the things that you achieved that Woodland. I mean, you were all MVL, you were all state. I think you were part of the top 25 all decade team, which is unbelievable because at the end of the day, Haley, as good as you are, there's always people that are good just, you know, in other towns, stuff like that. So to be in the top 25, I mean, whether you were, if you were even ranked 25, that's still awesome. And I'm sure you were probably ranked lower because that's how good you were. So, I mean, you just have to love that, you know, and look back on it and say, wow, I mean, you know, that's really something to be proud of. Yeah. I mean, the athletes that were named with me, I think I was like, I think I got like 22. I think 22, that's what right. 22, 23, one of those two. And like to see the athletes that were above me, I was just like, absolutely. Like, there's no doubt in my mind, like, those kids are like the the awards those kids have some crazy awards like we got all americans on there you got like all obviously i'll see i got some of my soccer teammates on there pretty sure there's like three two of them two of them were definitely on there alex casimir was one that went to uconn so like those kids that are above me like they all went big time schools great athletes great kids so to be on that list was like one probably but one of my biggest awards ever Right. And I bet 
obviously, I mean, every kid's dream is to make all state. And I mean, when you earn that, I mean, that has to be the pinnacle as far as high school goes, because I mean, that's what you're striving for. You you've worked all since four years old to get to a point like this. So, I mean, that had to be a great feeling. And I think the other thing too, Haley, is you have a lot of people rooting for you, especially your parents. And I mean, just being able to share memories like that with them, it has to just be very special for you. Oh, for sure. Definitely. My parents are two very emotional people. (laughs) Like (laughs) I think, um, you know, I never really see my dad cry, but on my last soccer game, I could tell he just wanted to, he just wanted to let it out. Like, it was just like the last game this year was like really just, just so sad. It's just sad that for like probably 18 years of my life. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, the thing is, it does go by quick. I mean, you don't think so, but I mean, it really does. And I could just imagine though, like, you know, they, like I said, they're rooting for you as a young kid. You know, they see everything you do, not just as an athlete, but as a student and a person. And to see you earn all state, all NBL, get on the all twenty top twenty five decade team. I mean, that just had to be something that you'll never forget sharing with them. Yeah, no, I mean my parents have been my biggest supporters throughout my whole life. Like they've been at like games in college, like they'll be at Vermont. Like they'll drive five hours in one day just to be at the game. So like I think that's what kept me pushing me too, even on like some hard days I may have had, like they were always there and they never wanted me to stop. Like they just, that was, they just made that known. Like they were there every day. Right. So, so let me ask you, Haley, I mean, um, did you talk to a few schools before you made the choice for Albertus or did, I mean, like, did you have it in your mind that you, you visited that school, you liked what you saw and it was pretty much a no brainer. That's where you were going to go. Yeah. So <laughs> I'll be honest, like, there's a team that I play in the GNAC, Emanuel, in Boston. That was, like, I was set and going there. Like, I was, like, verbally committed. I was ready to go be in the Boston area. And I was talking to that coach. I went there a couple times. I played with the girls. Did, um, I did, like, a clinic there with them. And I was, like, you know, like, I really want to be here. And I, the coach was awesome. And I think maybe right before I went to go commit to the school, the head coach had let me know that he was leaving and that he was retiring from being oh. a coach. So I was just like, I had coach Nick at Albertus, you know, texting me every day. Cause he, he was make, making it known that he wanted me on that team. So, and a girl on the soccer team I played with like growing up at Alberta. So she was really on me too. And I think like what went through my head was that I'm losing the coach that I kept all my contact with. Not that like, that's the biggest thing, but, I wanted to be at a school that like the coach like really reached out to me and like really acknowledged like my achievements and like what I was like playing soccer. So the Alberta's team, like the two coaches had come to a couple of my games. So I like, I've seen them before and like, I knew who they were and I just went, I went to Alberta's and I talked to them, talked to the team, did a stay over that night. And it was like something just clicked. And I was just like, you know what? Like I'm a half hour from home. Like, my parents could be at every game. That was like one of the biggest oh, no. things. Like they'll be at every game, every home yeah. game for sure. And just being close to home. So I think that's what really got me to go to Alberta's was being close to home. Great, like great te- like teammates that I met by that time. They were so outgoing, like so friendly. And I think that's like why I picked Alberta's was first for the family and like being close to home. Right. And that's, listen, that's a, a good enough reason to pick it. But, um, So explain to me the difference that you saw from playing high school to playing college. What was the thing that you said, okay, I got to step it up a little more. Like, what was the difference? You know, once I stepped into that college, it was like preseason. It was three practices a day. You were there at 8 a.m. You were there at 1 p.m. You were there at 6. Like, there was no in between. Like, you had to be at the top shape. Like, you had to be, like, at practice every day, 100%. Like, in high school, you got one practice a day for an hour. Right. And you just play. This is like you're playing like two weeks before the games even start. So they're just looking at you as a player as a whole. So once I got there for preseason, I knew like this is a total step up. Like this is this is like a real competitiveness. Like this is to start and play. Like that's what I focused on. I just wanted to play. So like I said, those three practices a day, it's it's tiring. It's exhausting, but 
especially in the heat because that's like right at the end of yeah. summer, that August. Like it was definitely a challenge, and I'm like, I got through it obviously, but it was a lot. Yeah, and I, I'm sure it's not easy trying to keep up with academics as well. And I mean, you did, you made it happen, and I know your coach said you may go down as not only one of the greatest women athletes ever, but also one of the greatest student athletes ever. And that's a credit to you and the commitment you made to both of them. But how were you able to balance both? Because I know, because think about this, if you're practicing three times a day, I'm sure there's a part of you that just wants to crash on the bed and go to sleep. So how did you manage (laughs) to make it work? So in the summer, like when you first get there, it's just preseason, you don't have any classes. So that was like the first thing too, was like practice, like eight, one and three or eight, one and six was like just practice. There's no school in between. But then once that following week starts, um, you start your classes. So like, that's when I first got my freshman year. I'll never forget. Like I was like, okay, I got to go to class now. I got three classes a day, not three practices a day. So it was definitely, I think what made me be a good student was how small the classes were. We only had probably like 20 kids max. It was the the, the teachers knew who you were like they were just like oh like just looking around like 50 100 kids they knew your face they knew who you were they know what team you played for so I think that's what pushed me too is like these teachers are close with our coaches and like my coach obviously is the assistant athletic director at Alberta so he knows everything that goes on so like I'm not at class he knows so I think like that was like a big thing for me is that like it's such a tight-knit school like everybody knows everything so like always being at class, doing homework, tests, anything, like just had to make sure I was at my best. Right. So talk about freshman year, because to me that has to be the hardest year because you're learning everything, you're trying to fit in and stuff. So how would you, um, you know, kind of talk, you know, assess your season? What was it like for your freshman year? My freshman year was definitely at first, like it was definitely scary. I'm not like being away from home, having to make all these new friends. Like it's definitely nerve wracking. Like, but you get put into it. Like any kids that don't play sports, like it's definitely harder for them. But like I got thrown into a family. So I automatically had, I had to um, room with girls that were on the soccer team. So I roomed with another girl on the soccer team and like, we got along really well. And then we had two freshmen right next door that were on the team. So like, getting to know them. So it was just like, that was a good start for me was meeting them and then getting close to them and feeling comfortable on the soccer field and getting used to the whole atmosphere. So I think that was like, what got me through it was really just getting thrown into a family at Albertus. Right. Now, Haley, let me ask you, because I mean, you do both of these so well, you're able to score, but you're also very good with assist. I mean, and how important is that? Because I, <laughs> I kind of compare it a little bit with hockey. I'll watch um, different players play hockey, and it's so important getting the puck to the right person and stuff like that. (coughs) Excuse me. How important is it as far as, like, making sure that you guys or girls are moving the ball so everybody gets uh, the rhythm going? Yeah, I mean, freshman year at Alberta, we were, like, it was a very inexperienced team. Like we were not, we had maybe four wins my freshman year. I'll be honest. Like we went four and 12, not a lot of wins. And my biggest thing freshman year, I think I was more of a scorer than a passer. Right. And I've never done that my whole life. Like in high school, I was yelled at to shoot the ball. I never shot the ball. I was always afraid to do that. I didn't want, I didn't want the glory of scoring. I wanted the glory of giving that person the like the pass. Right. I've always been like that. So freshman year it was more get Haley the ball, to like to score. It was always like that, and I think that was the, that was the new atmosphere that I was entering. Was like I was the one that was scoring a goal. Like I think my freshman year I had the most goals I've ever scored in a season, and I think that passing the passing the ball has always been my thing. Like I said, like I always rather see someone score. Like, that's, like, and feel better about giving them the ball to score. Like, that was, like, my thing. But, honestly, any – I've never had a teammate that was, like, oh, just wants to shoot, selfish. So, it was just, like, like Alberta's just – everybody wanted to see us do well as a team. It didn't matter who scored the goal. Right. And, I mean, think about this, Haley. I mean, each year, like I talked about earlier, you know, sometimes you can't always duplicate – 
uh, the same year you had from the previous one. But I mean, you not, you haven't just duplicated good seasons. You've um, you know, exceeded expectations. And I think about you know the fact that if memory serves me right from my notes, you are the first woman ever at Albertus Magnus College to earn all region two years in a row or twice in general. So just talk about that because that's a tremendous accomplishment. And I know you're a team player first, but there's got to be a sense of pride to know that you were able to achieve something like that. Because again, you come from that small town in uh, prospects. So, I mean, that's a heck yeah. of an accomplishment. Yeah. So, I mean, all region was definitely, that's the top tier. Like that was the best achievement I've ever gotten. And like my junior year of soccer, or last, I should say, not last this last season, the season before that. That was my best season of my life. I was best shape, best everything. Like I just want, like I was just at my top game at that that time in my life. And I think going off that, scoring, passing, being like a well known player in the GNAC, that's what gets you those awards. Is like your constant effort. It doesn't matter about porn points at that like goals and assists getting all region that's just you as a player and I think definitely my junior year is when I like got noticed very well was how well my game was at that age and that carried into my senior year or my fifth year last year or this season sorry and I think that just like really carried into it and just still playing as well as I could and like scoring and playing and getting the obviously the record at Albertus for most goals ever so like that was cool too but yeah. And think about this, Haley. I think this season alone, you had nine goals. And that it is so hard to score one goal in a soccer game. It really is. I mean, the defense yeah. is so good. And I mean, the fact that you scored nine for a season, I mean, is just unbelievable. But I mean, how, I mean, when you're out there and it's, you're going into battle, you know, you're playing and you're competing. Are you still enjoying it while you're out there? Or sometimes do you look at it as a job sometimes? I mean, it's – my freshman year was exhausting. It was – it was like we were all upset that we were not the team we wanted to be and, like, the team he thought we were going to have. So I think my freshman year was a little exhausting for me, definitely. It was definitely competitive. Like, the obvious – like, every game was a battle for us. Like, we didn't have that one game where I was like, oh, okay, we could, you know, get, like, some subs and get everybody to play. Like, it was just – Freshman year was just constant, constant, constant competition for us. And that was definitely exhausting. But throughout my years, it got a little bit easier. Like, we had games where we would let other girls that maybe don't play as much get in and, like, give us a break. <laughs> like, it was definitely, definitely nice for that kind of stuff. But we once we got into, like, my sophomore, junior, senior year, we got better, better, and better. So it was nice. Right. Now let's talk about senior year, Haley, because in the back of your mind, I mean, you know, like, listen, you, you read the papers and stuff like that, too. You knew you had a shot to get both these records. You knew you had a shot to be the all-time uh, or all-time scorer and, and also all-time points. So, I mean, how did you go into that? I mean, did you try not to think about that? Or was it, I mean, was there a part of you that thought about it a lot? You know, people said it around me a lot. So, like, it was definitely in my head, and I think that did affect me in the beginning of the season was how many times people brought it up to me. Like, just, like, friends just knew about it, like, at Albertus. Be like, you're going to get the record? You're going to do it? Like, and I think that it would be a lie to say that it didn't go through my head. It definitely went through my head. I wanted to go back for my fifth year to achieve those as well, obviously play, but, like, those are there. Like, you want to get those. So I think it definitely, in the beginning of the season, uh, affected me a little bit as my play and, like, scoring. But once I, like, got into midseason, I just didn't care about it anymore. I just wanted to have fun for my last couple, like, my last 10 games. Like, I just wanted to have fun. And once I had that fun, they just, all those goals just came. And think about it. I mean, 96 points for a career, 39 goals for a career, which is just, to me, is unbelievable. And, I mean, I'm no soccer expert, but 39 goals, like I told you, I think it's hard to put, a, like, two or three in, in a season yeah. for a career to have 39. I mean – you just have to really – you have to reflect back to when you first started to see how the end result was. And that's what you got to be proud of the most is you never gave up on this sport. You stuck it out. You wanted to be great at it, and you were. And, I mean, that just really has to be something that you could say to yourself, you know what, I, I'm 
did what I wanted to do and I, I went above it. Yeah. Like, like you said, like went above it. Like I went above my expectations, honestly, coming into Alberta. My coach did tell me like, he was like, you're somebody that can get those records, do stuff like that, get those awards. Like, so like that really encouraged me too. like, I wanted to do those things. Like obviously any coach that tell any college coach that tells you that you, you believe them. They, they know. Yeah. So like, I believe like when he would tell me like, you'll get like those all tournament teams, you'll get those all, all league teams. Like, you know, he talked even about getting like the record out of Alberta. It's like he said, you could, you could be that player. So I think definitely coach Nick was a person that pushed me. And he like, if I had like a, like I had a bad game this year, like I did not play well at all. And my coach let me know, like coach Nick, he let me know that you were the best player in this league and you're, you need to play better. You need to be that player. And he said that in front of my whole team. And I think that is one of the games that clicked for me too. Cause I wasn't even close to, I only had probably one goal before that game. And he was on me. He said like, you, you and I both know like you're the best player in this league. Like you need to be that player. And like, he really, I think that speech from him at halftime really got to me. And that's not a bad thing either, because at the same time, you probably needed that a little bit because I mean, he, what he was basically telling you is you don't need anybody to tell you you're good. You are good, but go out there and do it. So, I mean, I'm sure like sometimes you just need that little push to get to where you want. So I never look at that as a negative. That was definitely a positive. Yeah, definitely a positive for me. I like that. I mean, like I going back to premier, my coach for premier Joe, who's like, he was not a guy that was nice. Like he was, on you you made a mistake you came out like he wanted like he would make me cry when i was younger like he didn't care like he was like i think that's what gave me that mentality that i wanted that coach that would be on me like that so when coach nick did coach nick coach sean have never they're calm guys they don't yell they don't they just talk to you and once coach nick did that that game it was just like a spark like i was just like let's like let's go so let me ask you, I mean, there's always, it's always bittersweet when it's the end of the road and it's the end of your career. So while I'm sure like it was a very nice uh, last game, I mean, a lot of, you know, great moments that you and your friends got to share. It had to be bittersweet in the sense that you knew this was the last time. So that's always tough. So just talk about what that day was like for you. So once I got to my fifth year, it was like bittersweet. Everything was the last ever, every, every away game was the last and it was just more like we just wanted to have fun and like once it came to an end I think we I think I was content with it coming to an end like I like my body's exhausted as well like did I think about like go maybe going playing somewhere else after college yes I I I still think about it but like it was definitely bittersweet to come to an end like Alberta's like I've been there for five years I'm gonna be the grad assistant next year and help coach the team and get my master's so it's just like, I'll still be around. So it wasn't the end of that. It was more just the end of playing. So now it's time for me to be like an adult coach. So I'm looking forward to that a lot. So I think that's why it wasn't as sad for me in a way. So. Right. And I think um, if um, from what I've read is you are going to be an, a graduate assistant for Alberta, yeah. correct? So you're going to still be around the game. You're going to still be around the players. And let me ask you, is there a goal someday? Never mind, like college but like is there a part of you that would like to be a head coach someday in the high school level absolutely that's something i definitely have to get my coaching license because that's something that i want to do next is give back to like girls and i want to give them that experience and i think high school soccer was one of the big best moments of my life and i will always say that so i feel like to be a coach at that level and to make those girls like me say that like i it just like would like that's just something i want to do next I just want to be able to coach. Right. And let me ask you, Haley, um, you talked about it, like maybe playing again at some point. And I know a lot of adult women, like in their thirties, they're still playing soccer. They play every weekend. I mean, do you want to play in some type of adult league someday? Because I mean, I think like you're too good to just not play soccer. Yeah. So there's a co-ed league I'm actually in right now with some of my teammates that also graduated and there's, um, and we just play together with some of the other men's soccer team at Alberta that have graduated and we just all play on a team together. So hopefully we'll keep that team together for a while so we can just keep doing on our Tuesday night games. Right. So Haley, um, 
what would you say in your opinion? And I know it's hard to just pick one, but what is the most rewarding thing this sport has done for you? If you had to pick one. Definitely the people I've met, like there's, I wouldn't trade that for anything with people I met throughout this whole experience. Like my roommates from Alberta, my best friends from Woodland, my best friends from travel. I still talk to a lot of those girls like on a daily basis. So I think that's like my biggest thing is like the people I met along the way. Yeah. And like I said before, I mean, that's really like the most important thing in my opinion that you get out of sports is you get these lasting friendships that'll uh, last you a lifetime and you'll see these people and maybe sometimes you'll separate for a while, but you'll always keep in touch. And I think that's, if anything else, I mean, you know, you had a great career, but you even had, you know, a great life with the people you have in it. Yeah. Definitely. Right. Well, Haley, I, I want to say first off, I mean, congratulations on a wonderful career. I mean, never mind just uh, college, what you did in high school, what you did as a young kid. And I mean, I think the most impressive thing to me, though, is what you're doing in the classroom, because I mean, you are just, you've made Dean's List. I mean, you've been unbelievable. So, I mean, you've proven that while it's important to be successful in sports, it's more important to be successful in your everyday life. And I think that's what really stands out about you. So thank you for giving me a few minutes today. And I really do applaud you on a wonderful career. Thank you. I appreciate it, Mike. No problem. Well, there you have it, folks. You know, you just got to know this individual for 40 minutes and what a career she's had. But I think the thing that I'll take out of this more than anything else is we got to know Haley Andrews, the person. And just think about who she is. I mean, she is about her friends, her teammates, and her family more than anything else. Yes, she wants to be successful, and that there's no doubt about it. But I think she takes more pride in the fact that she built lasting friendships and that she got to see her friends succeed, her family share these moments with her. And that's meant more to her than any awards or any accolades ever could. This is an outstanding individual who's only going to succeed in life because she just wants it and she doesn't let anything stop her. She's one of those kids that has a goal and she never lets anything stop her. And she's going to continue to be the very best that she can be. When you look at the great people in life and the great athletes in life, you got to think of Haley Andrews because she's really making her mark. And the best part is, is we get to see her do it. For Hometown Heroes, I'm Mike Kenichi saying good night, everyone.